Hello Nick, welcome to my channel and my show. Sorry for the extreme delay because I lost one whole box of SD cards. My wife had to go home only to deliver the bad news that it's not at home. I had to ask Gary. <laughs> so thank you very much, Gary, for the 256 GB SD cards. Oh my God. We should be asking for a sponsor for SD cards. <laughs> Do you know anyone? Send this. Send nah. this. Uh, you know, send this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we are here today with uh, Nick. I met Nick when I was filming here at uh, Weekend Bike Fitter and over at uh, Bicycle Ranch. And yeah. you watch my shows and you're like, hey, oompa loompa. I'm like, yes, that's me. Yes. And then I got Nick to come onto the show. So thank you very much and welcome. Thank um, you for having me. Uh, Giant TCR, we were just talking. We have a lot of uh, cool things to talk about. Some okay. roast, some compliments, but maybe let's start off with you. Introduce yourself, please. Sure. Hi, so my name is Nicholas. Uh, I've been uh, cycling for about two years, COVID cyclist essentially. So it started back in uh, 2021 where you know, COVID circuit breaker was kind of a bit loosening up, but yet still tight. So went with a 4D, so I bought a Pikes, uh, bought it for my wife as well. At first it was just, you know, as an outlet after work, you know, just to let it out, you know, and tour Singapore. And that was, that itself was a big hook for me. But what made me switch to road bike was quite interesting because I went to Silita Aerospace, right? So being a first time cyclist on the road, I saw a lot of cool looking road bikes and, and I was just like padding like hell, you know? And I was really rolling at like 25 and this road bike just whizzed past me like effortlessly, you know? So the guys just like, oh, look at me. I was looking at that, I was like panting like shit already. I was like, okay, what's, what's the bike? So I was just asking my friends, oh, uh, that, that is a road bike, you know? And everybody here rolls minimally at 30. I was like, okay, okay. So that kind of make, sparked me to think about, okay, maybe I should do road bike. So kind of uh, punctured my wife for a while. So I remember just four months down the road after buying my 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 bikes, went to uh, just to take a look of Giant. Cause before that I did quite a few bit of homework. I was watching your China as well. I think your first few video was about Giant. Like your first bike must be Giant or something like that. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, okay. Go and read up about Giant. And uh, when, when I was still in the teenager, yes, I remember Giant as a brand. So Giant, Track, Cannondale, all those were the known brands back then. So obviously when I go to T-Junction, some people very recommended, go and try the TCR. So I was thinking between TCI and Merida, uh, but why I chose TCI at the end of the day was just the geometry wise was just very attractive to me. I, I can't explain. Went there and just wanted to just see, see out the price and you know, try out the things. And the, the next thing I realized I, I bought a bike. Yeah, and I bought a, a TCI Advance 2 with a 105 group set. Uh, got a so-called recommendation by the salesperson there to get M size. Uh, on a hindsight, yeah, it wasn't, yeah, I shouldn't go for the M size. Mm. We will talk about that. Very juicy and, uh, okay, I wouldn't say it's juicy, but very, um, very relatable to most new cyclists, I would say. Uh, we will learn from some of the mistakes. I, yeah. I, I had the same issue as well, which I've mentioned in previous uh, interviews. But before I go there, right, mm. um, is Jasmine a cyclist? She's a cyclist when I cycle. So, yes. She's yes. a cyclist. <laughs> and like, so, she knows about bikes, uh, parts and stuff like that. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. Okay. Uh, she's, she's, she's still riding a bike. So whenever we are, you know, cycling with my son, then yes, we ride our 4 still. Mm, because I, I used to have friends, right? Uh, back then, before I was married. Mm. And I couldn't understand this. They would say that uh, I would they, they would intentionally buy bike parts that look like their old parts so that their wife will not find out. Uh, so for example, they'll buy wheels right, that looks, right. the decals all must be the same, you know, cannot be like super striking. Right, set. Right. Also, my wife don't know that, you know, it's a new set. Oh, it looks that, exactly that's the same. A, that's a smart move. Which, which uh, would Jasmine find out? Would she know? Yeah, she, she, she's just shrugging you know, her shoulders. Yeah, we've been together for so long. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no secrets. There's yeah, no secrets, right, okay. I, I told her how much I buy. I remember the first day I came back home with a bike, she was like, huh? Okay, suddenly buy a bike. I have no space already. <laughs> that was like, uh, yeah, I, I will sell the, the other bike in space. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the price of the bike is not one two thousand, uh. No, it's not one two thousand. Okay. I told my wife this is two three thousand. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I'm not wrong. Two three thousand is how you read it, right? 
two, two, three thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You you tell me the full price later, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can tell. She, <laughs> she knows the price. Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay, yeah, nothing to hide. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it started off with a hikes and then the road bike because you said someone whisked past you. You wanted to go fast as yeah. well. Yeah. And and. Yeah, I, I think of course they look good, right? You know, wearing the jersey, then wearing the helmet, then got this very sucky face, you know, when they are at the drops there and they're like so fast mm. and they have a train of them. I was like, wow, they look so cool, man. Then I look at my bike, you know, pikes, uh, suddenly <laughs> doesn't have the cool factor. So I thought, eh, maybe that would be something interesting. But I was quite worried because I, I don't cycle at work at all. Mm. So I don't know, you know, what sort of uh, etiquettes we need to have. Mm. At the same time, I heard a lot of, you know, horror stories, you know, riding on the road. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, and, and you still ride the Foldy? Yes. In fact, tomorrow, I'm going to SA with my Brompton. So with my, with my Brompton friends as well. Do you, do you think people kind of look down on Foldies when they're riding a road bike? Now that you're both a roadie and a Foldy. By the way, I also just got a folding bike just to go to the market. Lah. So which one? It's just some cheap one. I just, support, <laughs> I, I just supported the uncle who's downstairs. Good. No, I mean like no point. I buy a $2,000 or $3,000 Brompton, right? Like yeah. For me, there's no point. I mean, I mean, for this or Brompton, I, I won't look down on them because it's, it's a different kind of experience that you enjoy, right? Mm. The Brompton can bring you to places you've never been before. You just pack and go, you know, and it's meant to be a chill, right? So sometimes, although I'm quite tempted to, you know, modify my Brompton to be faster, I just go, wait a minute, if I want to speed, I can just go to my road bike. Mm. But Brompton gives you that kind of freedom. So I always like to put, you know, my, my, my Brompton, I have in front of back, I put beer inside, I put a picnic chair, <laughs> just go to, you know, Pongo, Coney Island, open up and just relax and chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that is the enjoyment about cycling that, I, that really, I enjoy the most. Yeah. yeah. You know, when I got my cheap foldy from the uncle mm. downstairs, right? Something like 200 bucks. Mm. I was so excited, man. It's like, as if I got like a new road bike. I was yeah. so excited to ride on the bike. I was, like, I was going crazy about it. Like almost every day, I would just take that folding bike just to go onto the PC and just to ride. Until I like totally neglected my road bike. I'm like, oh, this is much more fun. I don't think I'm gonna ride my road bike anymore. Like have the back pains and everything. Yeah. Right? And, yeah now that you mentioned it, right? So obviously Bromptons or foldy is a lot more comfortable because maybe suspension or what, right? So when I first tried my giant on the road, I was like, shit, why this bike is so stiff and there's no suspension and all. It's so rough. Only then I realized, okay, it is meant to be that way. Mm. And that's where the term stiff comes in. Because last time they say it's very stiff, very stiff. I don't get it. So until I tried it, then I realized, okay, that's the reason why. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So enough of Foley. <laughs> this, is yeah. this is a road bike yes, channel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then you got the TCR at Advanced. TCR. Yeah, TCR Advanced was my first bike. Uh, so after two months, I switched it out to TCR Advance Pro Zero. Mm. So why the first bike, why the TCR Advance? Uh, so for me, it's, of being a first time road cyclist, I do not know whether I would enjoy it. So I wanted something whereby it's very cost effective and yet get the most bang of a buck for it. And it, it was a perk that the geometry of it, I, I like it as well. And I wanted an all rounder bike. So to me, Giant was a bit of a no brainer. It was just between TCR and Merida, but because a lot of my friends was really riding a Giant. They said, hey, just go for Giant. Mm. I was like, okay, let's go for Giant. And yeah, didn't look back after that. How much was that bike? Uh, so that was 2.9K. So 105? Yes, 105 uh, group set. Then Hello Hello wheels. wheels. Right. Yes. So when I cycled it, I was, again, that was my first road bike. So I have no comparison. I just felt that it was good. It was fast. Until I tried my friend's bike, uh, which was TCI Advance Pro. So I was like, okay, this is very stiff. So when I had a chance to sell my bike because the sizing was wrong, I went with an S-size and I further also shortened the stem as well. Mm. And my first response was this very stiff, responsive, great value for money. Mm. Uh, the story uh, of why there were two giant bikes. Mm. Let's get into it, man. Oh, so let's, let's get into the, 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 the reason. You, you kind of told me about it. I'm yeah. like, yes, we need to talk about this. Not to put anyone into a limelight, yep. but I think just to educate people who are getting new into the sport and they have uh, issues with sizing. Mm. So the reason why you have this second bike is because the first bike that you bought, the, the one that you're just telling us is because you got the wrong size. Yes. Tell us about that. So I'm 173, uh, in sim is about 81, 82. So technically on the charts, it did say that M is suitable for me. So when I went to the nice salesman was actually telling me that, you know what, you should be an M. I was like, Okay, you tell me I'm my M, then I'm my M, right? Because you're a first time rider. Yeah, first time rider, yeah. no comparison whatsoever. So I tried the M, tried the S to be fair. S felt a little bit too near. So I was like, I, and I felt there's a little bit of a toe overlap. So I was like, okay, maybe this is not for me. 
So I went for M and partly because it's for very lame aesthetic reason. Mm. The bike looks bigger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, okay, looks nicer, right? So I tried M, felt a bit stretched out, but at least I felt more comfortable. So when I went out on the spin, that was before I did any pre-bike fitting. I didn't know what was that either. So when I, I tried it and it felt something was off because I felt uncomfortable. I was asking my friend, is it correct? So a lot of my friends felt that, no, I think your stem should be shorter, you know, to compensate. So that was where, after I did a lot of homework and asked everyone, I was like, I need to solve this bike already. So thankfully that time, Giant and the resale market was still hot. I managed to just lost about a couple of hundred dollars. Mm. And straight away I was like, I know what I want. I don't want to go back for, for TCI Advance. Just go for the pro straight away. And got an S size this time around. Mm. Uh, but how I got to S was so I went to a bike fitter to do it. And they actually told me, you actually an S or in fact, you can do an XS as well. So when to, when to do the bike fitting and yeah, went for S. Mm. Oh, wow, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> because when <laughs> so I- So many links. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, you, you're a first time cyclist, yes. a road cyclist. It's yes. very hard to, you obviously first thing, instinct is to trust the salesman, right? Yes. They tell you as you might, okay, he's probably right. Just go for it. The ones who were just really quick to try and push the sale, I walked away. Just like your friend JD said, uh, yeah, they'll tell you everything fits. Like 54 can, <laughs> no problem, I'm more aggressive. Yeah, you know, yeah. sort of things. No problem, you know, we can change the seat post, we can change the stem, no problem. Yeah, come on, you yeah. know. So what is the tip then for you to tell people who are, you you were in that position, what we have told yourself that back then, what, what is the tip that someone should do? Should they try different sizes? Should they go for a pre-bike fit? How, how does it work right. for you? I would say for me, I didn't did a pre-bike fit. Business was simple because I do know whether I will enjoy it. So I want to keep my capital as low as possible. Uh, but for any people out there who is you know, really serious to it, do a pre-bike fit. I think that will solve a lot of unnecessary spendings. Mm. Right, and I think if I rewind back time, I would probably bring a friend along just to get a third party opinion to know. Cause I went there by myself. So whatever the first person is telling me, of course, yeah, I, I trust you. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think, um, and I always advise people, okay, if you don't go for a pre-bike fit, then at least have the chance to try different sizes. But it's, it's tough because if you're a first timer, mm. you don't even know what is right. Yes. Right? Like too stretched out, it might be right for some people, but you know, yeah. uh, it, yeah. it might be totally off. So yeah. pre-bike fit? Yes, pre-bike fit, definitely. Mm. So when you got that, uh, the, the first bike, uh, wrong size, mm. then you went for a bike fit, mm. bike fitter told you that you could actually go for a smaller size. Yeah, even excess. Well, what was your reaction when it's like, oh my God, I just wasted all this money. I was <laughs> like, oh shit. I sh- yeah, I should trust my instinct and realize that because the moment I come back home and I ride a few times, I felt something was off. So I started to get my wife, you know, to take a photo of me when I'm on my bike. <laughs> and I, sta- I started to sit WhatsApp on my friends who bike. It's like, hey, bro, does it look right? They, everybody was like, bro, I think the bike is too big for you. Uh. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what am I going to do with this bike? Whether can I sell it in the first place or not? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, that's what I did also. Like, uh, and I, I have my bike, especially when I'm playing with stem lengths and spacers. Mm, I would ask yeah. my friend, can you take a photo from me? Because I'm a cheap skate, like, I, don't, I, I don't go for bike and stuff. So from there, then I kind of make my own judgment to see whether it am I right? Or there was one time also I was running a 100 millimeter stem on my 52 Venge. And I, so I was riding on TMCR, so my friend just like taking photos for IG and stuff, right? right. And I looked at, at the photos, I was very tight. As mm. in, I could have gone longer. Right. So I bought a 110 millimeter stem and then I felt a bit much better with right. a longer stem. I yeah. think that is, yeah. Because to me, my friend was advising as well, it's better to go with a smaller fit and longer stem. It looks nicer than a bigger fit and shorter stem. And yeah, unfortunately I was the latter. Mm. And to me, aesthetic was a big no-no. Yeah. So straight away I was like, you know what? In fact, I was thinking really should I go for XS, but my only main concern was the toe overlap. Right, yeah. toe overlap. Because short wheel base also. Yeah. Right? And then what made you go for the bike fit? Because it was like your first bike and then why, why bike fit so quickly? I guess the point of time I felt that I'm going to invest a lot more in this hobby. So I thought might as well, you know, just rather than go and Google and read up yourself, just get a profession and do it for you. You're saving time and money at mm. the same time, getting proper education about it. And that was, yeah, because I, I went to Performance Bike Fitter, went there and that's where I got to know more about what bike fitting actually is. 
And that's where I start to realize, wow, road biking is an expensive hobby, man. <laughs> too late, too late to realize. Yeah. Already in it. <laughs> oh my God, the, the jersey, I mean, I have a group of friends, uh, you know, we, we ride together, we're all giants and we're just poisoning each other. Not, if it's not a bike, it's the jersey. <laughs> if not a jersey, it's the shoe. If not a shoe, it's the sunglasses. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Okay. So um, why did you decide on performance? And there are a lot of bike feeders mm. out there. So why performance in particular? I just did a Google search. And then I think it, it came out. So I went to read and the prices comparing to everybody was, I guess, a little bit more friendly, right? And they also offered a free one year. Anytime you can go back to do it and they won't charge you. I was like, okay, this sounds like good value for money again. Let's go for it. So when there, go through the whole experience again, first timer, everything felt was good and all. So yeah. How much are we looking at? Yeah. Uh, See, Gary is uh, looking intelligently. <laughs> <laughs> But I, you know, I, I think it's 400. I think it's 400. 390 or 400. Yeah. Uh, back, back in the day, back in the day. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's how you knew the, the boys here, right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's how I got to know them. Okay. Yeah. And tell us the, the, the feeling and the experience of doing a bike fit. It felt very scientific, yet there's a lot of medical elements in it. And that was where I realized, okay, this hobby is not as simple as it looks. There's a lot of science behind it. Mm. And I was lying on like, you know, the patient bed. I was like, wow, we need to do this or not. It feels like I'm walking to a doctor's office, you know. So the whole whole procedure was just quite mind-blowing that this a, a, a misclick position can affect your whole body. And that's where I realized every single thing, if I change the stem, change on this, it's going to give me back pain here and there. So to me, it's okay. Uh, I think just this to be more savvy. Anything that's go to a bike fitter. Who was the bike fitter? Can we name him or we can't? Uh, yeah, yeah, can name him. I think he's the owner. I think it's okay. Owner. I think it's Alan. Alan. Uh, Alan or Aaron? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice guy. Uh, rate him out of five. Out of five, uh. Wow. But to be fair, I've not tried other bike fitters before. Like. Okay, but was was it worth the money? Do you think for you? For at the time, for that money and all, again, no comparison. I gave him a 5.5. In fact, I left him Ooh, a, 5 .5. A, a Google review. Because mm. to be honest, as a first timer that has nothing to compare, it, it was good. It was good. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you would recommend a bike fit? Everyone should go for a bike fit? Yes. If you have the money or if you have any, you know, you feel your body is a bit misaligned or what, go for it. You, it will really save you a lot of unnecessary <laughs> pain. And those pain it becomes, you know, causes or fees you need to pay for your PT. I, I think my body is uh, pretty much uh, totally gone case, already. Gone case, gone case already. It's beyond repair. Beyond so, repair. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes. So, uh, bike fit, and then, um, then you got this one. Yes. Uh, you said because wrong bike, you sold off the carousel, just went straight for this one. Yes, correct. Okay. Why don't you just go for the one with the integrated seat post? If you're going to go all oh, out, the right? SL. Yeah. yeah. I, at the point of time, part of me realized that going so high end, do I really need to? I mean, I'm not a competitive or you know, silver cyclist, right? I just want to enjoy it. At the same time, cost was also a concern, right? So I got this for 7.2 back then. Mm. So 7.2 Altegra and- This was COVID, is this COVID price? Yes, but recently they dropped the price again. So oh, now okay. it's 6.7 or 6.9, which is a good buy. Actually, I think now, or maybe just wait a little bit longer, it'll be the best time to buy bikes because a lot of people are exiting the hobby. COVID is over. Yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at carousel. I was just curious to see because I was a bit itching to whether I change a frame, right? And I was seeing other people selling this frame for what? 1,008, 1,009? 1,008? 1, yeah. For the frame? Yeah. <laughs> Full carbon. <laughs> oh my God. And it's, to be fair, it's quite stiff for its price point. Which model year is this? 2020? 2022. 2022. And the different year models just basically color. Color, but I have a friend who got a 2023 and he has a 2022 as well. I don't know if it's possible with fact, but he said the 2023 for some reason is a lot stiffer. And mm. he feel that he have he has put in less in less watts mm. for the same uh, performance. You should ask your friend how much more do you pay for that? Then you will know whether it's placebo or not. Same price, eh? Same, same price. price. Yeah. Then it cannot be placebo already. La. Yeah, <laughs> probably so. Yeah. Okay. And how what were you looking out for? I know you were looking for this kind of frames, but in terms of group set wheels, because mm. uh, we've got some questions on the wheels and the aesthetics yes. of this bike, but we'll sure. do that later. Uh, run us through about this. Maybe you can run us through the whole bike first. Right. So yes, I think starting no OSPW. Mm. Not really a big believer <laughs> yet. <laughs> yeah, but, but this Altegra uh, 8150, if I recall correctly. Uh, fully carbon uh, for the wheel set. 
I actually switched out, it was SLR1 full carbon, but I decided to go for the 404 Firecrest, also partly due to Shane recommendation, who is my trusted mechanic. Uh, then I everything else is all stock, to be honest. Everything all stock. Here is uh, carbon cages, uh, complement by uh, For my bike comp, I'm using Garmin, Garmin 830. Why do you need an 830? I always ask people this question, why do you need such a big screen? Uh, unless you're hey. using the functions. I like things bigger. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not, not to compensate anything. Everything must be big, you know. You need to have thick this, <laughs> big screen, compensate for other things. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, in fact, when I look at H0, I was thinking, shit, I think I should go for the, is it the 1020 or 1080? Yeah, the, the even larger yeah, one. Yeah, even larger one. Cause, yeah, because I, I wear specs, right? So sometimes to me, bigger screen, it looks nicer as well. Mm. But yeah, I just banned for the 830. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna roast you, man. Yeah. Why did he Come. why did he recommend the zip? <laughs> why? Uh? I, I, to be fair, I tell him my price point. Uh and I also told him I want some because my SR1 was I think 42. The debit is 58. Mm. So I didn't I want something that could help me maintain the speed and I want it to be like faster. It looks nice. Mm. So zip was one of the consideration. I think Dura Ace back then was also another consideration. Uh, people was also recommending me hype, Hyper Wheels mm. as well, Elite Wheels. And yeah, I think there's a ton of it. But I think price point, I got this for slightly less than 2000 Sing. Okay. Yeah. This is their own hubs, right? This zip hub. uh, Yes. It, it, yeah, this is their own hubs. Mm. Their okay. own hubs. So to, to me, I felt that just top up a little bit more, just get a zip 404 cost. I wanted to go for speed and I wanted to roll with as much minimal effort as possible. Then the question is why not a propel? I don't like the aggressiveness of the geometry. I don't know why it's, it's like, I want the best of both worlds. So TCR was very comfortable. I tried my friend propel and first thing was, yeah, it's quite low and I didn't like the acceleration pickup speed. This is very responsive. Yeah, and but that's the thing, when I switched over from SL1 to 404, the main thing I felt was lost was the acceleration. Because it's deeper. Yes. Mm. Yeah, but after that, then when I maintained at 35 onwards, I felt that it requires less energy. So quite happy with it. So you feel that the rolling is much more easier with yes. the deeper wheels? Yes. But you will lose on acceleration, right? Yeah, but I mean, mm. I'm not competing with anybody. So <laughs> yeah, to me, it's just want to enjoy the journey, enjoy the speed and know that, okay, if I can hit 40 to 50, right? Oh, that's good. I'm happy with it. What's the weight of the bike? I, okay say 7.4. 7.4? Yeah, 7.4. But I, I'm guessing it's 8 plus everything, water bottles and all. Uh. I think I, I think we're looking at 8 here. I think. The website says 7.4, but when- We'll, when, we'll wait. Yeah, we'll, yeah, wait. we'll wait. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know, I also want to know. <laughs> okay. But I think it should, they say 7.4, but I feel it's 8. Uh. Mm. Feel it's eight. Because zip wheels are not as popular anymore, right? Like I nowadays, guess so. it's being like overtaken by your Princetons and, uh, uh, and whatever, yes, not la. So, yes, all the fanciful ones, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is fancy, but yeah. I, I don't know, like, why isn't it as as good as a seller as it should be? Like, back in the day, Zip was the top brand that people would go for wheels, then now it just kind of like yeah. disappeared a little bit. So, for me, I mean, I, I haven't been cycling enough to know all the comparison of wheel sets, but to me, Zip was really for aesthetic and price point. Right, because of course, Princeton's wheels and all is it always looks good. But do I really need it? Mm. No, for now. Yeah. How long do you think you'll stick to a giant? I was so between my friend, we were all joking that right, less than one year I will change this again, and <laughs> I'm coming to my one year mark soon. Honestly, still quite happy. Uh, if I were to change, it's just purely out of each man. Mm. Yeah. What are you looking at? I tried wrench. Who? You want to buy my bike or not? <laughs> yeah, same size. <laughs> if, if the price is good, yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? You can come yeah. to the house. I'll let you try for free, man. And then I... <laughs> well, I mean, I, I was just thinking, yeah, probably an S work. So I was thinking S work or the track were done, you know. And that was where I'm just thinking, okay, should I go for air route or go for comfort, which was the Tarmac SL7 S works back then. But now they're saying June, I think they come on the SL8. So if SL8 come out, SL7 price will drop. And then you see another a lot of people selling again or carousel again. Mm. But, but again, if I were to change, yeah, probably an S work. Mm. Okay. And sorry, just on the wheels, right? Are these mm. are hookless and tubeless? Tubeless, yeah. 
I think hookless, hookless or yes. hookless or so. Yes. And I uh, understand from hookless, and you can't really run very high PSI, right? Yes. Uh, so for me, I run is 80, 80. I'm trying to drop to 70, 70. Wow. But I used to write at 95, 95. Mm, mm. Yeah. And, and when I first got out of the shop, it was 100, 100. But 100? Yeah. I guess 100 for hookless is kind of high. La. I mean, yeah, yeah. explode, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what else should we pick on? I mean, the rest are pretty much standard. Yeah, it's all, all stock, man. Didn't oh. change anything. Oh, sorry, the setter. Uh, I changed mm. the setter to uh, specialized power. Yeah, oh, that was okay. also by recommendation of the, the bike fitter. Okay. Yeah. Do you find it much comfortable for you? Uh, what were you? What's your previous saddle? Uh, it came stock with it. Uh, I forgot what was it. But if I recall, the front part of the nose was longer. Mm. Yeah, and I was a bit discomfort. So he got me a shorter one and no complaints so far. But again, I've been hearing a lot of people talking about the power mirror, right? Mm. Yeah, so I was thinking, okay, if that's the next upgrade, maybe that. But I'm um, yeah, speaking with Shane, probably the next one I might consider is the, the BB, BB <laughs> Infinity. I think I think weekend uh, bike feeder might uh, have three D printed saddles. I'm not sure they might have. You have right? Yeah, he has. He has. He has a three D bike feeder. You go and try lah. Yeah. Need to give him some shout out. That's my rent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Need to yeah. pay rent. <laughs> rent. Rent is due this month. This month already. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I leave everything to to Shane lah. Mm. Because even the full servicing, changing of the the wheel set, I just leave it to him. Uh, rate Shane's bike servicing out of five. <laughs> out of five, uh, <laughs> this such a Difficult answer. I don't know whether should I give him a 6.5 or a 7.5. Like. <laughs> make, sure make, make sure you give him a Google review. Yeah. You know. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I give, a, give a shout out on him on Instagram. I also share my friends. So, so, these are my friends are also supporting as well. And I think everybody have very good comments about his services. Lah. Very detailed and it's not salesy. It's very honest, very consultative. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I first came here, right, I was like, wow, bro, you have a lot of bikes and he's like here 24 7 and yeah. he's just, he's the only guy here. And I asked him, like, why don't you you hire someone, right, to go and help you out and clear your backlogs? He's like, oh, I, I don't want to hire people because they they might not be as attentive for how he wants things to be done. So he wants to be like hands on. Yeah. That, that's, that's every business owner's concern, right? You, mm. you, you build a business yourself, you want to make sure that you have the right talent that is upholding the same values. Not yeah. easy. Yeah, so that's, uh, I used to be doing that with all my production and video editing until now, oh. I had to outsource it to one of my very trusted video editor. Um, he helps me do everything and he's doing an extremely yeah. good job. Something's but worth to outsource. I'm, I'm, but I'm extremely underpaying him. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I, I, I still hope you will still help me. Please help me edit. If not, <laughs> all these videos will not go out on po YouTube. Probably had to censor this part. <laughs> <laughs> underpaid. I, I think he knows. And uh, I, I told him honestly, I look at this, the amount of money I'm making from YouTube, I cannot afford you. Oh, okay, well, that's, <laughs> yeah, fair. So that, that's fair. I'm very thankful that he's helping me la, anyway. Yeah. Um, okay, that aside, mm. uh, last reviews of the bike uh, and what should people look out for and any upgrades, dislikes before we go on to the questions? Right. I think we talk about bike fitting. I think that's an important part. Uh, I think the other part, okay, probably some may not, or maybe the question will come out, right? Is I didn't slam my stem yes. at all. Uh, so this is a stock. Ah, uh, this is stock. So everything is all stock. So the next thing is, even I'm going to Shane, uh, is probably to want to slam it. Because mm. now I'm probably quite accustomed to what I know is comfort level is. So probably want to slam that down. But for all rounder bike, for the stiffness and the value for it, I think Giant is probably one of the best bank of bike. Merida also is another one. Uh, of course, Canyon. Canyon as well. Yeah, but I guess for me, I prefer something that is physically I can go down and try the servicing. Everything is all there and done. So that's why I chose for Giant. Anything else to recommend? I think just go for the TCI Advance Pro. It's good enough. Don't waste time with TCI Advance. <laughs> yeah. Dislikes? Anything that you don't like or you wish would have been different? Cables. Mm. The cables is still quite unsightly. For uh, for this bike that costs 7K seven, seven plus, right? it should be covered. But again, there was some argument that that's why the cost is effective. Mm, yeah. yeah. So yeah. if that's the only thing, that will be my only thing. But I think external cables, it's very mechanic friendly, easy mm. to work on. Yeah. Um, not having it integrated, right? I tell you because, uh, oh my God, <laughs> the integrated cables, I tell you, you just want to replace headsets or just do simple fixing, right? You got to take the whole damn thing out, got to pump the, the bleeding again. And if yeah. you work on your bike, you will understand the frustration. Uh. <laughs> but it looks Tech, nice. I yeah. Say. I mean, that's why for me, I think aesthetic wise, yeah. But again, it, like what you mentioned, right? All these things come with a price and convenience. Maybe the cost of it also may go up when you do all this repair work. So mm. I, I can't complain any further. The only thing I hope Giant may do is 
boomers is I heard they may probably change it. So mm. I yeah. Okay. Uh, that answers half of the IG questions about the STEM ah, <laughs> okay? and okay, the spaces. Okay. So all I'm right. going to skip all of that. Yes. Next uh, next question, I guess. Um, if this bike were to weigh 8 kg, because we don't know, I yeah. haven't weighed it. So the question is, are you happy, assuming it's 8 kg, are you happy with 8 kgs? What will you upgrade next? Weight-wise, 8 kg, yeah, I'm fine. I mean, if you shift off half a kilogram, it's not going to make me that much faster. I still believe it's the rider. 50% bike, 50% rider. Uh, and if I were to change next, I would probably go for something more performance related that yeah, I can feel it. Maybe one is the BB. Uh, group side, I'm quite happy. Uh, maybe there's a power meter. Oh yeah, you don't have a power meter, no. man. You no. got to get a power meter if you are training. Yes, yeah, so that was uh, the other thing that my friend is poisoning me, right? Once you have power meter, it's a slippery rabbit slope because you're going to look at data and everything. Then my only point of concern is I want to enjoy the ride. I don't want to always be looking at data and you know, each ride feels as though like, okay, I'm chasing off the numbers. Yeah. I just want to enjoy the journey. Yeah. But if I really have the money, I just, I would just do those two straight away. Mm, okay. Um, you mentioned bottom bracket. I know you're going to supposed to change BB with Shane. Yeah. Why, why are you changing the BB? Oh, very simple. Ichi. Ichi. So yeah. which one? BB Infinite? La? Yeah, BB Infinite still. Again, uh, Shane was recommending still that she's more than sufficient. And again, to me, it's my purpose of cycling is just to enjoy it and not to go for like competition or what. So this is a stock BB? Stock BB. Okay, you will fit. feel so much difference once you really? change to, yes. Okay. I'm running on BB Infinite, but my reason was different because I had creaking BB. So I got a one piece BB from BB uh, Infinite. And I went okay. for the steel. Yes. Because I don't find there is a need for ceramic and I think it's marketing. So I mm. just went for the cheaper option. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the similar consultation that Shane also shared with me. Mm. So I yeah, decided going for that. See, that's why Shane is honest. If not, yeah. he would have told you to buy the ceramic one. Yes, and he that's why I, I still go back to him. And, uh, and yeah. you would be buying a new bicycle by now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Long term review of the TCR, is it a keeper? Yes, definitely. Without a doubt. Mm. Hands down. I mean, I, I can imagine myself riding this for the next two years, three years, and I'll still be happy with it. The only thing I will change again is because of just each year. I just want a more aesthetic look. And probably if my next one is if I'm going to chase after speed, I might want to try more aero bikes. Mm. So could be a Venge. Yeah. Venge, buy my Venge. Okay. Buy my Venge before the SL State 8 comes out, okay? <laughs> no, I want to wait for SL 8. Yeah, I can get it cheaper. <laughs> Shit. Uh, <laughs> okay. By the time this video comes out, maybe the SL 8 is already out. So, oh, uh, yeah, so do you maybe. think the SL 8 is going to be, a, it's rumored to be an aero bike? Mm, then... I think that was the initial, a lot of people were talking about the SL7 because it's kind of a bit of a in-between, right? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I probably have to see it. I think at the end of the day, is aesthetic to me is probably what I probably like to do next. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take a pause here because yep. um, I want to go back into your attire, right? Right. So you say it was like a rabbit hole, your friends poisoned you oh, here yeah. and then change right. and stuff. When you first started out cycling, were you, do you know about cycling attire? Uh, when when you were on a foldy, it's just like shirts. And yeah, shorts foldy, and pants. Yeah, short and pants, right? And I remember my wife was telling me the way I wear my first outfit on my bike, it looks like I'm going to sleep like that. <laughs> and it was like a sleepwear. So, so I was like, okay, shit, I need to up my game already. <laughs> now, of course, when I see road bike, it's like, come on, it's so it's so slick, it's so cool, right? And, and I didn't realize how expensive jerseys can be. Right, so I heard the PNS and everything, and people were saying like one one set was like eight hundred to one thousand, or at least five hundred dollars. Like crazy, who was spending this kind of money? <laughs> yeah. So, do you know that cyclists wore bibs without underwear? No. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't realize that. So I was wearing with underwear, and my friend was like, "Huh." You're supposed to go commando. I was like, "No, no talk with me." Uh, it's so it's so weird. It's so so awkward. It's like. It just feels so naked. Wait, wait, wait. The, the question is, how does your friend know that you, you were wearing underwear? Because I think he probably believed everybody have this. The, the rookie mistake. Yeah, rookie mistake is you will show wear underwear. What? Uh. Right, right. <laughs> Who will, yeah, don't wear underwear doing all this stuff. Did he feel like a weird question? He asked you, hey, you wondering underwear or not today? I thought he was just like trolling me. Like, <laughs> like yeah, suppose then even next time I don't wear it, but I look loser. <laughs> they will wear underwear, this guy. <laughs> so, but, but when I... Then I went to Google. I went to Google and it's like, okay, shit, it's, it's, it's true. Lah. <laughs> and that's where I realized, because if, if you have that, under, you have underwear, you have the chamois as well. 
Then in my mind, also it didn't click. Why should I be wearing underwear? Because you have the chamois as well, right? Yeah. So when I took it out and I wear, I was like, okay, my bib is good. My bib is good. <laughs> what was your first set of bibs and jersey? Uh, so started with just like those shoppy one, right? Like ten, fifteen dollars one. Then after that, went to the Catalan, tried the bib, and it looks so weird, you know, with the bib. You know, my wife saw it, it's like, wow, it looks like. Some Borat. striptease. Borat, <laughs> Borat, right? I was like, oh, this shit, this, this looks so weird. And yeah, going to the toilet is going to be such a chore as well. So started from, from the Catalan, moved to Munton. Then after that, uh, RCC, Wafa. Mm. And straight away, it's like, all oh, my friends, just poisoning each other. Hey, Wafa, let's go down where they have the pop-up store. Yeah. So we also signed up for the RCC membership. Then we got all their limited editions as well. Then we went, uh, now I'm wearing map as well. Mm. Uh, so far, these are the two, oh, and CSPD. Mm. Yeah, CSPD as well. CSPD is a Thai brand. Yes, Thai brand. Uh, yeah. Is it as good as these uh, uh, international brands? Not to say that CSPD is not international, but... Okay, so CSPD to me, I feel aesthetically wise, the cutting, uh, CSPD looks more slick, looks more aggressive. Uh, when I come to the bibs, right, because I tr- they, this is the map Team Evo. I got the Rafa Pro team. Uh, CSPD, I got their, their bib. I felt the beat was equivalent to a Rafa pro team training. Mm. And to me, the most value for money, I would probably say, probably map a little bit more. Mm. But if I go for longer rides, I feel the pro team does its job well. For the costing price, I think it's quite quite worth the money. I think uh, PNS is one of the top ones as well, right? Yes, yes. I didn't go for it. I have friends that wore it. Uh, they told me that the beat was crushing their balls, right? Crushing their balls. Yeah, In a good or bad way? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah, probably. No, I mean, a good, a good way, I guess it's like firm up there. La. I mean, <laughs> holds your. your... Okay, so <laughs> if, if it cups the balls nicely, it's okay, but it's crushing. La. That's a different story already, right? Maybe the saddle is not. His no, 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 really? but, but, but yeah, so that was his complaint. And I think the PNS, maybe the quality drop or what, but his the trap always came out, right? And balls of steel, la, your friend. Oh, maybe. La. <laughs> too, too many children over there. <laughs> But yeah, so so PNS, I mean, aesthetically it looks great. Like, but I think dollars-wise, do I want to get it? No, but probably for bits wise a lot have been recommended ASOS. Mm. The one is, of course, I saw your channel was the red-white, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, well, coming from like super cheapo ones to the top tier, right? Mm-hmm. What? The, the, the difference must be so large. Yeah, straight away I realized that, oh, it's not my saddle problem. It's, it's my beep. Beach, right? It's yeah. a chamois. Yeah. Yeah. And and some brands actually realize, right? Because chamois does this uh there's this pattern. Is is it vector the the two two triangle one? I'm not sure. Yeah. So basically map actually buys it. Mm. So there are other brands that buy this chamois itself. Mm. So actually at the end of the day, is I'm quite sure it's all put it from a similar factory or what lah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And device is all paying for marketing. Mm. Uh okay, sorry, uh, deviated a little bit. Um you said that you had friends who submitted some questions. Yes. Can we shout out some usernames? Because I see a lot here. Can I see? Is this your friend? This one? Yeah. There's, there's four here. Okay. Yeah, is this your friend? Yeah, okay, okay, let's ask right. the questions. <laughs> you, you would have seen a, a sneak Can. peek already. Uh. Ask him to demo a Muscali post for us. He's really good at it. Tell us who's Muscali first. Muscali, I, I know who, who is that. Yeah, like. she's the, the Thai ambassador for Rafa, right? So Careful, uh, your wife is here. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a Thai ambassador, female cyclist, <laughs> no big deal. Yeah. It's so, my wife going to ask me, who's this Muscali? I keep talking about her. Yeah, go, go back IG and find her. <laughs> you know, I think she had this post whereby you sit on the bike, then you know you put the leg up and you post like that. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't do it as good as my friend Leon. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we, are, we don't want to be... I know it's all not bike questions from Leon. <laughs> okay, all. okay. Let's ask all his non-bike questions. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. Heard you are successful on and off the bike. Tell us how you fund this hobby. Wow. Wow. Mm. Tell me a thing of two because I also want to buy a bike. I mean, I'm, I'm doing sales. So I'm in a, in a recruitment industry. So basically, I do specialize in a pharmaceutical and medical. So more of executive search. So that's how I fund my bike. Mm. Yeah. So basically... That's the reason why I think for any salespeople, you need an outlet as well to regulate or any jobs as a matter of fact. So that's how I, this too kept me going because mm. you work hard, you earn the money, you buy the bike, it helps to release your stress, you continue. <laughs> so it's a vicious cycle. You cannot escape the matrix. Yes, you can't, which I'm <laughs> gladly willing to do. So. <laughs> okay. As long as you are gladly willing yeah. to do. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, what's your friend's name again? Leon. Leon. Yeah. Let's, let's uh, answer of Leon's question. Sure. Very funny. 
I heard you asked your boss for a S Works for top sales award. Did yeah. you ask your boss for top? Oh uh, yes. S-Works? So so my company basically, if you get top sales award, you get a Rolex. Oh really? So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So I I told my boss, can I don't get a Rolex <laughs> and I just want a, a, a S Work? You know. Yeah. I, Is your boss a cyclist? No. He was like, what the hell is the S-Works? I'm giving a Rolex, man. Yeah. So, and you, you, you thought the bike would be cheaper. I said, uh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I want a top end one, which is 21,000. Uh, I want that, right? I say, but obviously I think for the company's branding and all, uh, they want to reward all their paper with a Rolex, which is their trademark. Mm. So to me, I didn't have any inkling for, for Rolex. So I felt that this sparks more joy, right? So I rather write something that I enjoy. I can't imagine the, your, your boss's um, impression or when, when you say that I, I don't want a Rolex, I want a bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> what like, the hell's wrong with this guy? I think he worked until his, his <laughs> yeah. brain gone here already, right? But until I told him the bright price, he was like, oh, okay, okay. Now I know where you're coming from. No, he's like, oh, no, mind. I give you the Rolex. <laughs> I'm not going to give yeah, you the Rolex. Yeah, you just take the Rolex. I'll be happy with your Rolex. <laughs> uh, tell me something your wife doesn't know about your bike. Oh my God, it's funny. Wow, nothing. Of course, honestly, I tell her everything. Yeah, sure not. The price and yeah. Let me let me try to find out. Uh. okay, go. Mm, well, the biggest one I guess is the wheels, yeah. which I told you the story about. Right. You know, my and I mentioned were, the price also. Right? Okay, yeah. well, guess that that cannot be uh, hidden. Oh, nothing. Nothing. Very honest man. It's a very honest bike also. <laughs> nothing yeah. to hide. Yeah, that's the thing I realized about Giant, right? For all your Chinas, right? Mm. Uh, people are more empathetic to Giant riders because. It's just good value for money. I mean, you can't get cheap and good mm. everywhere else, right? Mm. So yeah, <laughs> hard to pinpoint something. Uh. What's H O T T? Ah, so that's the name of uh, my cycling group of friends. Mm. So what again, does it stand for? Uh, it's H O T T. Will be hop on the train. We have our IG group. Uh, so basically, we are all giant riders. All TCI and one propel. Uh, we have uh, TCI Advance, TCI Advance Pro. We have TCI. SL and then the propel as well. Hmm. So there's about six of us. So again, cycling, that's one thing I enjoyed my cycling because it brought me back to a lot of my old friends, ex colleagues, uh, army bunk mates as well. We all go back. So to me, yeah, there's another thing I didn't mention. I think hmm. cycling brings people back together. All the communities together, yeah, right? Community. How do I join Hop on the Train breakfast rides on weekends? You want the politically correct answer? Let's or? start with the politically correct one first. If you enjoy cycling, you like to do road biking, come join us. <laughs> Doesn't is, matter what bike, it's okay. Uh, so what is the not politically correct one? Yeah. You must have a giant. No, then my friends will say, as long as you are a girl, you're welcome oh to join us. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Easy entry, yeah? yeah? Don't have to line up. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, you, you briefly talked about the cables. Let's get into something more serious. What do you think about the outer cables in 2023? Outer cables in 2023. Oh, okay. The, okay. the protruding cables. <laughs> That's a thing that I felt if Giant sort that out, right? Actually, aesthetically, it's, it's as good to go already. Nothing much to change. Because uh, I don't know whether they will change this part. Like for some of them, they probably make it more flush. Mm. But I think everybody's all talking is the cable. But there are some people that manage to do it. But of course, you will kind of avoid the warranty or something. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah. Mm. Honestly, really, yeah, I, I'm even struggling hard to even find a reason to sell this bike as well. Uh, okay. Yeah. From my friend. Uh, I don't, I don't get, quite get his question, but maybe you can relate. Okay. Can you open a bottled beer with the gap at the back of the stem? Asking for a friend. Is there a very big uh, gap at the back of the stem? I think I the- can see from here. Yeah, on top. Okay. That's the one he's talking oh, about. Oh, okay. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, very big gap. yeah, I think there was, uh, who is it? I, I know there are some 3D printers trying to market uh, the cap that can cover it to make it look flush. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, it, it came like this. And of course, if I slam it, then it's gone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's so special about a TCR? Uh, I think I felt the difference when I'm climbs. And even on flats on climbs, it's a, it's a very good all rounder bike. Again, I'll probably be repeating myself. Right? I think for the price point, it's, it's stiff enough. Uh, the acceleration, the response signal is all there. Uh, and whenever I'm just on the hood itself, it's very comfortable. I did it with RTI, no issue at all for anybody. Uh, I haven't tried Mount Faber yet. 
with this bike. What? I haven't. Again, COVID cyclist, so I didn't get to try COVID that. COVID was so long ago, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, not, that's not an excuse. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I Tomorrow, mean, you know, go Faber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the only thing I, I need to try, like Mount Faber. Uh, yeah. I did before in Sentosa, it was okay. But yeah, Mount Faber, I think this will really put a bike to a test. But usually every Saturday, I'll ride with my Alcan good friends. So we'll do the Mandai look. Mm. And that's where I can feel the difference of, of this bike. Hope to see you in Mandai some, some other time. Okay. Besides TMC. Now I know Mandai how your face looks like. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. This is a roast. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> a Kenyan Aero Endurance pack with Altegra DI2 is also cheaper than this. I don't know how much C- it costs. CFR? Are you sure? How much is a Kenyan Aero Endurance Endurance with Altegra DI2? How much are those going for? The last I thought was probably about 6 plus 7. Okay. okay. To be fair, I think that's why Canyon is like the the Western version of Giant. For the costing price and everything, like Canyon was the next choice I like as well. But mm-hmm. to be fair to that, if they had a stock, which you can't get it easily back then, or they have a retail stock, I'll go for Canyon. Yeah, actually, I think Canyon is also, like you mentioned, one of the value for money bikes. Yes. Only downside is no stock. And no after sales. I guess no after sales in the sense that you have to send it back. Yes. Right? But I think if we have, I guess, good mechanics, they probably can sort that out for you. Mm. But yeah, you don't get to see, you don't get to try is one thing. But the stocks, uh, yeah. if you don't have the stocks, even I want to buy right now, so I can't get it. I have to wait. And mm. yeah. Mm. How does it feel like to spend so much money on a TCR and not get below the 7 kg mark? Mm. It's very rare that you see a disc brake bike below the 7 kg mark. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I'm not uh, the person that chase after weight or the bikes. Like. I mean, I know there are some that really do try to bring it down. <clears throat> to me, it's, even if I bring it down, it's not going to make me that much faster. Mm. Yeah, So I, I don't want to get caught in that unnecessary weight chasing. Mm. Yeah. You are a father. Yes. Can you give some fatherly advice to this user? He says, how can I convince my parents to let me upgrade my bike? Hmm. <laughs> of course, I guess if he's still studying, set a goal. Uh. Like you can hit what A for your subjects or what. That I mean, get a power meter first, <laughs> right? For each subject, uh, by the time you finish one whole final year examination, you can probably get a new bike. <laughs> yeah, no point. Yeah, with I think that you, then you tell the parents, rather than spend the money on tuition courses, hmm. use this as an in, in incentive. <laughs> yeah. On the wheel set, you got moved on from the SLR, the giant SLR mm. to Zip. Why didn't you go for a KDEX wheel set? Which is like the giant branded one. Uh, I think back then was, I think to me it was just aesthetic. Yeah. I think I just liked the the fun of it. And yeah, I, I just went for it. Mm, okay. And they, it was cheap at that time. Of course, I think Zip in Singapore back then was selling about two, eight to three plus. Mm or the cheapest to find, and I saw this on probikekit.com from US. It shipped from over from the US within one week and it was 1.9. What if you just get it locally? Is it cheaper? No, online? locally it was more expensive. By how much? Uh, like I said, two five was the cheapest. Mm. If not, it's 2.8 to 3.2. I think Shane can attest to that also. And and Shane was very honest on that. I was like, wow, this guy is really different, man. He was, he was when you tell me, hey, Nick, you know, I, this place, yeah, it's the, this is the pricing. Because I show him probike kit. I said, hey, legit or not? He said, hey, legit leh. Yeah, uh, you should go for it. I was like, wow, okay. And next time I'm coming back to him again. I have met respect for very honest mechanics because yes. you have to juggle between being honest and, and feeding your family. <laughs> and feeding your family, correct. Yes. Right. And I I don't want to generalize this, but I would believe most people will sell you things that are at not at an honest price. Or yes. not honest opinions, right? They just shove it down your throat. Yeah. And like, you know, this is good for you. Bye, 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 bye. It's yeah. your target, right? You're a salesman. Yeah, yeah, of course. And of course. <laughs> Sales is, you, you sell things that is a pain point of your customers, right? And you amplify the pain points, right? But he was honest enough not to do it. And of course, I'm sales, I'm very sensitive to sales pictures. I can smell one. Mm. And for him to, to don't do that, I really respect him for it. Mm. And again, to your point, right? He has to juggle between both. Mm. So when do you cross the line? Yeah. Yeah. That's like me as well. When I started this YouTube uh, adventure, it's it, until today, it's still a hobby. I will never, uh, or this will never become, will replace my full-time job. That's why I can talk shit Maybe on for this now. show. <laughs> <laughs> until you start seeing me, this video is sponsored by, and then uh, I, cannot, I cannot start talking shit anymore. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But so, I think that will be not the fun part of it because yeah. I, I've been following your channel since like what, your first 10 videos mm. to date. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and, and I do get people emailing me and sending me products and they'll be like, oh, um, yeah, you have this product for you. Can you review it and stuff? And because I'm so small, uh, oftentimes it comes with a script. 
Right. They're like, right. Uh, this is the product, we'll give it to you. There's a script. And I know of uh, other YouTuber friends who would take on this kind of stuff and you would see it being very, like you said, you can you can smell that it's a, it's yeah. a pitch and a sale, right? Then you watch their video, it's like, they're just trying to advertise and then, yeah, that, that's not the whole point of this. I mean, yeah. yeah, I guess that is the life of being a KOL or influencer, right? You need to get paid, you need to do what your client tell you to do, but is this a conscience, right? Mm. So at the end of the day, do you talk about integrity or do you talk about what really matters to you? And yeah. that is where, why I also follow you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I hope you still follow me the day I become a sellout. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and I look forward to the day I get a wrench at a very good price. <laughs> that's when you know that, I have become a seller. Yeah, and yeah, I think that's, that's, that's take it. Just take it. It's free. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, I think this question is directed to me. Will there be a time you will stop accepting PCR for interviews? The answer is no, because I think I, re- I, I have more people coming on with uh, Specialized and PNAS, not as many TCRs. Yeah. You said you actually cut count of how many TCRs I did. Yeah, I think I'm the six or seven, but to be fair, it's, it's quite a wide gap from each of us, right? Mm. Uh, but again, everybody know as well, everybody know what uh, Kenyan, Pinabellos, so many of them as well. Yeah. Uh, but not everybody is in a luxury spot to buy those. Mm. And I try my best to accept a wide range of uh, guests. Uh, to be honest, I pick anyone who will want to come and do this with me. So if you want, you can uh, contact me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, there's, there's a reason why. Because you're being objective mm. with the bikes, regardless of the brands, right? We went to Seca as well. So, yeah. right? We have a China brand bikes as well. And as a community, it's good knowledge for everybody. Mm. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me pick something. Oh, okay. This is my uh, fellow friend from Malaysia. I rode with him, with him once he had this bike. Did you experience any chain drop? I have this bike and he has a tendency to do it. No, not at all. And in fact, I, I heard some complaints about the TCR is breastfeed. Uh, it has clicking sound, mm. right? But I think that is only if you really power down a lot or you're a heavy rider, which I'm neither or both. Mm. So that's why I have no issue. I never have any chain drop at all. Mm. Okay. Maybe I'm not pushing it hard enough. Maybe, Maybe. You're not pushing it hard. <laughs> Maybe I haven't gone Mount Faber yet. Or, yeah, right. yeah. or uh, your mechanic has done a very good job at oh, tuning yes. the. Yes. What? This this whole series uh, sounds like as if Shane yeah. is sponsoring yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Wait, just stop it. You know, it starts to smell like, like sales pitch again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, stop, stop. No yeah, more, stop, no more stop. for you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we need to give you a credit to Weekend Bike Fitter. Uh, you want to come and do more bike fits? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said you want to try the 3D printer saddle, right? Yes, yeah. and mm. also be able to change, right? So, wow. Well, I think you need to work out a good package deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last question for the day. We're sure. almost at the one hour mark. Mm. Uh, your bike looks very stock. Mm. Any plans to upgrade anything cool? Uh, who, who is that? Uh, one of my long time friends. Oh, your friends. Oh, okay. yeah, I thought yeah. it was my own friends. No. Uh, he could be your friend, I don't know. Right. Uh, handlebar. I want to change the handlebar. Do I ever handlebar? Slam it. Change to BB. Power meter. Change the saddle to power mirror. <laughs> That's it already. It's going to be a Frankenstein of a bike. Yeah. Like, you, because you, if you've got arrow wheels, your your frame is not arrow. Yeah. You, you're going to get arrow bars. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is some principles to it, right? If you have an arrow bike, keep it arrow. If it's a climbing bike, keep it climbing parts and all. But to me, maybe it's the ignorance whereby I'm still quite early in my cycling journey. So maybe whatever I just share is... Maybe I'll look back like that's crap lah. You mm. know, just buy as well <laughs> and go everything crazy about all these parts. But it's the journey, right? Yeah. Having to upgrade different things, yes. experience it. And, and there's a part where I I want to upgrade slowly, right? And you enjoy the the changes each time you upgrade and you value it. Because if today I straight away I didn't have it, I have an S work or Pinavello. I do not appreciate it. Mm. And I don't know what good looks like because I've never tried the bad. So if I try this and I try S works, then okay, then I know what am I really paying for. Mm. Nick, you've been a wonderful guest. Uh, Before we wrap up, any last things that you would like to highlight to anyone who might want to buy the bike or anyone who's watching? Because you watch the videos, you're probably watching this in uh, four or five months' time. I I think don't really have much, but I guess just really stay safe out there when you're riding and I think just looking out for each other when you're riding on the road. I think bikes come and go, man, right? Everybody can just get a bike at the end of the day by having proper etiquettes on the road, sharing the same road. I hope this video can help educate more people that don't see all road cyclists as, you know, road hoggers or, yeah. Mm. Round of applause for Nick, everybody. 
Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you, thank you. Got drunk off your love, and I lost myself again. You hit it just like a drum. This time I won't let you in. You're playing with fire. No, I didn't know the play, but this time I.